Greetings and salutations movie nerds, my name is Gilbert Ibarra and welcome back to the Attic Review. Alright guys, I am super duper excited about this 1997 release that I, um, man, I'm really excited about this movie because when I talk to my brother-in-law about it, we have this conversation probably once a month about how scary this movie is. And it really put me over the top to do this movie when I was talking to one of my close friends. We were in Iraq together and we were discussing movies about that I could probably talk about in the future. And I was like, I brought up this particular title and he went from... It was such an awesome reaction that I wish I recorded because this movie's not scary. These reactions are telling me that shit, whoever hasn't seen this needs to watch it ASAP because I know... That for my generation, I'm an old man, I know you can tell the grays in my beard, okay? But this is kind of an underrated film and really just a, an unfound gem that people should be talking about more. That's the whole point of this segment is why haven't you watched this film? And this one, I think, might have topped the list besides The Lost Boys on how come people haven't seen this because it is amazing. It's in space. It's got a ghost ship. Great cast, great directing, great effects given the time frame, and a horrifying ending. So why not watch this film? What movie are we talking about? We are talking about Event Horizon. Let's check out that cool poster. You're still looking at the greys, aren't you? Well, don't look at the greys. What did you see from the poster? All right, what I saw was uh, two of our main characters and that scary ass ship. Okay, so we have Lawrence Fishburne who plays Captain Miller. Captain Miller is head of the Lewis and Clark, a rescue vessel. Rescue vessel that heard a beacon distress call from that spooky ass event horizon, which was the creation of Dr. Weir. Dr. Weir is played by Sam Neill, the other character you saw on the poster. And we are trying to find out where the event horizon has gone because like I said, it is a classified ship that is classified as secret because of its capabilities. Its capabilities, because of Dr. Weir, he created essentially a machine that can create a black hole. So we are no longer dealing with A to B straight line. No, no, no. They are playing with the laws of time and physics by folding space to create a wormhole to jump through to save us on travel time. And so the event horizon is back and it's around Neptune. Let's kind of take a look at the event horizon. I'll say it and say it again. That is a spooky ass ship. So the event horizon still out there running amok around the eighth planet. Still the eighth planet, right? Yeah, eighth planet Neptune. And it's out there. And the Lois and Clark crew wants to go home, all right? They're tired. They're horny. They're tired of being horny. And they just want to go home, you know, and just live it up and stop being in space for a little bit. But they get the call to see if there's any survivors. Now, by all accords, there shouldn't be any survivors. As they come up and they want to discover if there's anything on board, they run that fancy schmancy bioscan to see if there's any signs of life, which there shouldn't be. Surprise, surprise, there is. Now we are seeing not only traces of life but the way it's scattered it's very suspicious and it's kind of telling the audience that something is not right with this ship at all <sighs> you see i done told your asses it was scared but no don't listen to gilbert so it goes without saying this ship we should be running away from and the whole crew is tingling like we should get out of here but Dr. Weirdo over there is like, nope, 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 that's my baby. We gotta take it back. We gotta get it back somehow. And thankfully, Captain Miller's like, we're leaving. The ship doesn't like that. And we're about to see uh, literally hell unfold before our eyes. And it is so scary. So I'm gonna get into, of course, why you should watch this movie because there's a lot to appreciate with it. But Doing research as to uh, why people haven't seen this, or just general research in general so I can understand the movie better, so I can explain it to you guys, I found out a lot more about the production of this movie, and shit, I'm surprised that it's even as good as it is. And let's get into why haven't you watched this film, and what went wrong with it. Let's, let's check this out together, guys. All right. 
where to begin with almost the ill-fated story of Event Horizon because this movie was kind of doomed from the get-go. I mean, and it's not like Poltergeist where they're using like actual skeletons and kind of deserved a curse. This movie was just rushed and didn't get wasn't given the proper nurturing it deserved, especially given how much of a cult classic it is now. And it's just frustrating to know that Paramount forced this movie because of the later release of Titanic. They were released in 1997 Titanic and Event Horizon. So Paramount had an open spot in, I believe it was August because there was the delays of Titanic. So they had to move it to December. That left a big blockbuster opening spot and they needed it filled. In comes Event Horizon and the production was just like so rushed. I think this movie, they said it took 10 months to make which is insane considering the vast scope of space, the FX, the story. It was just, wow. So you have 10 months to work with. Now, Paul Anderson made this film and he had a great vision and it is very frightening. In fact, he made it 130 minutes long, but originally the MPAA at the time gave it the kiss of death with an NC-17. Now, if you're not familiar with those ratings, R is already kind of bad enough. You're really limiting your audience. That's why you won't see like Avengers really do R-rated movies. We are seeing an influx of that recently because of Logan and Deadpool. But R ratings are already difficult enough to gain back your, your revenue. Now, to give it an NC-17, that is just, you're not going to make shit from it. And studios do not want to do that. So what do they have Anderson do? They had him cut out about 30 to 35 minutes of his movie. The saddest part about all of that is that he wanted to, he got the green light to kind of do a restoration and do a director's cut. But it was so, like, they can't even find the footage anymore. Because back then when they were making movies, it wasn't like uh, DVDs now with all the bonus features. It was just really straight to VHS. And nobody really had the time or um, ability to watch those special features. So unfortunately, all that stock footage of the extended hell scene, which I'm going to talk about later, everything was lost and a lot of the storyline could have been beefed up by those cut parts. So it's really frustrating to see that this movie, as well as it's doing now, could have been so much better. And I think that's the reason why a lot of people didn't watch this movie because A, it was rushed and kind of just thrown out there by Paramount, in my opinion. I can't hold any facts, but from what I was researching, this is kind of the conclusion that I'm coming to. So unfortunately, because of all those circumstances, it didn't blow up at the box office. <laughs> box office like it should have. I'm sorry, excuse that little flub right there. But the earnings for the commercial um, intake for ticket sales weren't that high. And it was kind of seen as just kind of a failure almost. Comes, uh, comes with this story of, if you're familiar with Kurt Russell, he did a movie with Paul Anderson later on called Soldier in 1998. Russell was able to view the movie. And he straight up told the directors, like, hey, man, check this out. Ignore what's going on right now. In 15 years, you will be happy with the movie that you made. Now, I'm kind of paraphrasing that, but I thought that was, man, what a vote of confidence right there. And he wasn't wrong. So let's talk about why this movie is great and why you should watch Event Horizon. Let's go. <laughs> let's talk about why you should watch Event Horizon immediately. Let's get the basic stuff out of the way, all right? The set design, the special effects team rocked it. You know me, I'm big on color schemes and everything. So the greenish hue throughout the whole movie gave me a nice chilly feeling. And there was some blue hue as well. And again, that always makes me feel anxious and just dreadful. So they nailed it on that part. And the interior design of the Event Horizon is very fascinating if you pay attention. A lot of stuff um, is inspired by, I'm not going to say gothic, but a lot of like, old school like uh, church tops and even some crucifixes so if you pay attention you'll notice some of these things which I thought was pretty neat now let's get into the cast I love the cast performances all of them were very very believable and the cool thing about it is that we have some good actors in this movie but none of them overstep one another or try to outshine the other one even Lawrence Fishburne and Sam Neill who are the headliners just perfectly feed off of one another and the intense scenes are that much more intense because they just had a great way about them and delivering their lines and even the physical aspects of some of the scenes were very believable. It wasn't like, oh man, it looks kind of forced or whatever. They did a great job and they convinced all of us to be scared as shit in space. Now let's get to the real fun stuff. 
the gore and the death scenes. Like here's just, here's some of the examples. <laughs> oh man! So I'm trying not to jump ahead too much. Let's just say the opening sequence is surprise, surprise, scary. We're setting the tone, we're learning about the cast and crew, and little things start happening. They start getting flashbacks, hallucinations. Of course, never good. In a movie like this, they're never good flashbacks, and these hallucinations are going to be scary. Now, let's get into some of the aftermath of what happens when the uh, core that drives the event horizon is opened up again. Now, we talked about it's a rescue mission, so why, what are we rescuing? We're rescuing the ship itself, and they're trying to find survivors. Now, again, so the ship went missing, but where did it go? We, we don't know, but given the hallucinations and the bioscans on the ship, we can tell it's haunted. There's no surviving crew, so essentially, this is they've been to hell, a dimension that we can only try to imagine as hell because Event Horizon... I believe it was like a term talking about what would happen once you get past our physical laws of like time and space. So this ship went to hell. I, one second, just look at this. <laughs> like, I don't know how much on my channel I can show without it being uh, like violating any YouTube's rules. So I don't want to do that. However, if you are a brave soul, this part, again, me and my um, brother-in-law, we talk about this scene, and I'm even horrified that there was an extension of the scene, but let's do this. On the display, go to the one hour, two minute mark, 42 seconds. If you're even braver, do it on slow motion, but you are in for the most horrific 14 seconds of hell, like brought to the big screen. Like this is a studio made movie. And these 14 seconds were so just, God. I get a sick feeling in my stomach just watching those scenes. Like it is just pure torture, chaos, anarchy, just living it up in hell. It is so terrifying and I'm both sad and relieved that that rest of the footage got destroyed or lost or whatever because that was really awful. And I think that's one of my main talking points about Event Horizon is just that, that, that scene alone. And then the ending, my goodness, I know, I know, Gilbert, you're always talking about how dark and grim the endings are. Okay, I'm sorry, forgive me for the movies I watch, but this ending as well, <laughs> I don't like it. Doesn't give me the feel goods, all right? So when a movie does that to me, then I know I love it. And I think you'll really love this movie as well. So again, Event Horizon, check it out. If you need a copy, let me know, all right? Holla at your boy, maybe I'll lend you my copy, all right? I'm getting tired of this song, guys. I'm so sorry. Please click like and subscribe. I messed up again, all right, guys? I get so excited talking about these films. And this one is really worthy of your time. So again, thank you guys so much for joining me today. Please click like and subscribe, tell some friends and family. And when you see the movie, tell me what you thought of the hell scene. All right, guys, again, click like and subscribe. Thank you so much for your time. And I'm Gilbert Ybarra. Thank you for watching the Attic Review. Smile, tiger.